So this ion is not a god. It was all physics and I'm going to prove it in this video. If you don't know the backstory, two years ago I found this ion. And many people believe that this ion is a god. The reason why people believe that this ion is a god is because of the name. The name of the ion is Ogun Chokoro. And in Yoruba language, Ogun means god of ion. Now there is a lot of things that are attributed to this ion. And one of them is the fact that they believe nobody can lift the ion. And the truth is, many people that have come here have tried to lift this ion and nobody could lift it. But the day when we visited here, we were about six grown men trying to lift the iron, but nobody in our group was able to lift the iron. All of a sudden, an old man came out from nowhere and ended up lifting the iron. When the old man lifted the iron, a lot of things started coming through our head. Even when I posted the video I made there that day, thousands of people believed that that old man is a native doctor, a witch doctor, or somebody who is assigned by the god of iron to look after the iron. But since that day, I have been researching and learning new things, trying to explain what really happened there that day. And two years later, I'm here to tell you that this iron is not a god. It was all physics. And by the end of this video, you're going to understand what really happened there that day and why the old man was able to lift the iron. So if you're ready, let's start. This iron is a mystery. The mystery is that nobody can actually lift this thing. To explain what happened there that day, we are going to combine two physics subjects and these subjects are pressure and work. Pressure is going to help us understand why almost everybody that have tried lifting the iron were not able to lift the iron. And when we combine pressure and work, we are going to explain why the old man ended up lifting the iron. And it doesn't matter if you're a science student or not, by the end of this video, you're going to understand what is really happening to this iron and why the old man ended up lifting the iron, even though younger people were not able to lift it. And without wasting much time, let's start with the first subject, pressure. When I say pressure, what do you understand? Anyway. Pressure can be defined as a force acting on a surface based on the area. Or you can say, pressure is a force acting on a surface per unit area. Whichever one you choose to say, you are correct. But what does this mean in real life situation? Let's assume that I have a book. And this book is weighing 10 Newton. If you don't know what is Newton, Newton is the unit that is used to measure mass. So, if I have a book that is weighing 10 newton and I place it on an area, a place that is about 1 meter in length and 1 meter in width, what this means is, the moment I place this book on this area, the book will exert pressure on this area. And to calculate the pressure that this book is exerting on this area, what we do is force divided by area. Therefore, Pressure is equal to force over area. Now let's talk about the second subject, work. When we talk about work, what do you understand? It doesn't matter if you know the meaning or not, but work actually means anything that is accomplished by the action of force. What does it mean? In the earlier example, I said that I placed a book of 10 newton on an area of 1 meter in length and 1 meter in width. Now, let's say I want to move that book from that place to another place. I will need to exert force on the book again. It's either I push it or I take it from that place and place it in another way. Whichever one I choose to do, I have exerted force on that book. And by the time I move it to another place, that means I have done work on the book. Therefore, work is actually force times displacement. If you don't know what is displacement, displacement is like when I take that book from that place and move it to another place. As for the fact that that book have changed location, it is called displacement. So we can say that pressure is force divided by area, while work is force times displacement. Now, if you want to understand how this relates to what happened there that day, let's look at how the man actually lifted 
the iron. If you calculate the force times the height, you're going to get exactly how much work that this man exerted on the iron. Now, let's combine pressure and work to explain why this iron is so difficult to lift. You're probably wondering, how is all this mathematical equation relevant to the topic? I want you to understand that as we proceed in this video, everything that I just explained will make sense. But here is a warning. You're going to hear force a lot and you need to understand what is force. Force is something that we actually do in every of our daily activity. Let's say as I'm sitting here, if I want to leave here and go take a shower in the bathroom, I must exert force to be able to move from one place to another. Let's say we have a car parked in a particular spot and we want to move that car to another spot. You must exert force on this car to be able to move. Let's say I have this pen on this hand and I want to take this pen away to another place. I must exert force to be able to move this pen from this place to another place. So, now that we understand what force is, why is this iron so difficult to lift? Take a look at this iron once again. What comes to your mind? If I should guess what is in your mind, you probably think that this iron has so much weight. And that is true. Now, since this iron, you believe it has so much weight, it means that this iron, once it is on the ground, it is exerting so much pressure to the ground. Now, let's assume that this iron is weighing 800 Newton and it's sitting at rest on the ground. What this means is, as this iron is sitting on the ground, it is exerting a force of about 800 Newton to the ground. And this force is called downward force, or you can say force due to gravity. For anybody to lift this iron from the ground, you must overcome this force due to gravity. And what this means is, you must exert force that is above or 800 Newton. Since this iron is exerting a force of 800 Newton to the ground, you must exert a force of about 800 Newton or more to be able to lift this iron from the ground. Now, if nobody is able to lift the iron from the ground, it means that nobody is exerting the same amount of force that this iron is exerting to the ground. And now you understand how pressure is restricting this iron from moving when people try to lift the iron. Now, let's explain how the old man ended up lifting the iron. To explain this, we need to dive deeper into pressure. And when we combine it with work, we are going to understand how the old man ended up lifting the iron. To explain how the old man ended up lifting the iron, let's look at the clip once again. <laughs> now, to explain how he was able to lift the iron, let's recall what I said about pressure. Pressure, I said, is equal to force divided by area. And work, I said it is force times displacement. Now let's look at pressure. What is the meaning of force divided by area? Force divided by area means if you want to find the pressure that this iron is exerting on that particular place that it is sitting, you will have to calculate the force and divide it by the area, which is the size of the place that it is sitting. In this case, we said that the iron is weighing 800 Newton. And if this iron is weighing 800 Newton, that means to calculate the force, force is mass times gravity. Gravitational constant is 9.8. So you will say mass times gravity, which is 800 Newton times 9.8. And if you calculate this, you will have 7,840 Newton. It means that this iron has a force of 7,840 Newton. Now, to find the pressure that it is exerting on that particular place, you will have to divide the force by the area. Recall that we said that the area is 1 meter in length times 1 meter in width. 1 times 1 is 1. It means that this iron is exerting 7,840 pascal of pressure on that particular place. Now, for anybody to lift this iron from this place, this person will have to exert 7,000 
840 newtons of force to be able to lift it. Now you understand why almost nobody is able to lift the iron. Now let's talk about the man lifting the iron. Let's see what the man did. What happened here is the man bent the iron. And the moment he bent this iron, it means that he had significantly reduced the pressure that this iron is exerting on the floor. And I'm going to show you how to calculate it. Now, remember, in our last calculation, this iron is weighing 800 Newton. And when we calculated the force, we got 7,840 Newtons of force acting on an area of 1 meter in length times 1 meter in weight. Now, when this man bent the iron, what it means is he had extended the area. Now, let's assume that the new area after he bent the iron is 2 meter in length times 2 meter in weight. That means 2 times 2 is 4. To calculate the new pressure that this iron is now exerting after he bent the iron, we will say 7,840 newtons of force divided by 4 meter of area and we will get 1960 pascal of pressure being exerted on this new area in that situation this man have changed the force of this ion from 7840 pascal to 1960 pascal and that explains why this man was able to lift the ion after he bent the ion and now you can tell that this iron is not actually a god, but it is because of physics. That is the reason why almost nobody is able to lift the iron while it is sitting still. But after it is bent, almost everybody was able to lift it. And I have evidence for that. Because after this man bent the iron and was able to lift it, everybody in our group did the same thing. And we all was also able to lift the iron. And that is why I tell you, it is not a God, but it is physics. If you want to watch more scientific, educative content from me, subscribe to the channel because I have a lot more coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.